Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Textron launches 2022 Special Olympics airlift, also Sporty's home airport concerned about nearby home development, and EAA B-17 takes bird strike with minor damage. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. We have a packed episode with the latest news. So let's go ahead and start with next year is the 2022 Special Olympics USA Games and Textron is asking for help transporting the athletes. Textron has started work on what they call the company's signature industry endeavor, the Special Olympics airlift, by starting the call for Cessna Citation, Beechcraft King Air, Beechcraft Premier, Beach Jet, and Hawker owners and operators to help transport more than 4,000 athletes and coaches from across the nation to the 2022 Special Olympics USA Games in Orlando, Florida. Since the first Special Olympics airlift in 1987, nearly 10,000 athletes and coaches from across the United States have been transported to Special Olympics World Games and USA Games. With this eight SOA, Textron Aviation aims to recruit 228 aircraft owners by February 28th of 2022 and then return them to their home bases on June 12th, 2022. In addition to aircraft, pilots, fuel, and in-kind support are requested for the airlift efforts. While the 2022 USA Games are located in the southeast, thousands of athletes and coaches will travel from all over the U.S. and as well as the Caribbean and Puerto Rico to attend. Coming up after the break, a senator proposes relieving FAA of airspace control. I'll explain what that means for drone operators. In Diamond Aircraft, innovation is in our DNA. Whether you're taking to the skies for training or business travel, every aircraft in Diamond's lineup features innovative technology, an industry-leading safety record, superior performance and efficiency, and a comfortable flying experience. No other company has pioneered as many aviation firsts, achieved more milestones, or received the same amount of industry praise as Diamond. Discover why Diamond Aircraft is one of the most trusted manufacturers in aviation at diamondaircraft.com. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical, with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. If you think things have been messed up lately, just wait and see what happens if Senator Mike Lee gets his way. AMA informs us that Lee has reintroduced the Drone Integration and Zoning Act, a bill that would give states counties, cities, and local tribal governments the right to manage low-altitude airspace thereby creating something of an airspace free-for-all. Specifically, the legislation would preclude the FAA from authorizing UAS operations under 200 feet when flying above private property without permission of that property's owner. Vans Aircraft reports solid sales despite pandemic supplier issues. Despite recent issues with a contractor that affected an unspecified number of RV quick built kits, Vans Aircraft is soldiering on. Affected kits are being replaced where necessary, and the company seems to be dealing with an outside issue with unusual candor and is being fairly upfront with their customer base. But despite that, Vans reports that it turns out that January and February were, by a significant margin, the largest month of kit sales in the history of Vans aircraft. And March is looking about the same. In fact, 2020 kit sales were significantly greater than our already strong sales from 2019. Three crewmates up in space were busy repositioning the Soyuz. 
The Expedition 64 crew members who arrived at the International Space Station on October 14th of last year have successfully relocated their Soyuz MS-17 spacecraft. Expedition 64 flight engineer Kate Rubens of NASA and Commander Sergei Ryshikov and Sergei Kuchergov, both of Russian space agency Roskomos, undocked from the Earth-facing port at the station's Razvet module at 12.38 EDT Friday. And Rizikov successfully piloted the spacecraft and docked again at the space-facing Poisk port at 1.12. Hartzell Engine Technologies becomes Gamma member. Representatives of Hartzell Engine Technology have noted that the company has become a member of Gamma. I can say that everyone at Hartzell Engine Technologies, we are very proud to be a member of this excellent organization, stated Keith Bagley, president of Hartzell Engine Technologies. Even with the unfortunate impact of COVID, our team has made amazing strides in positioning HET for the future. Over the past several years, we have successfully completed and integrated a number of key acquisitions into our Montgomery-based facility. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's return to the rest of the news. A zoning change might pave the way for a planned community pretty close to the Sporties Home Airport, and that means trouble. The Clermont County Airport business community, including Sporties Academy, Eastern Cincinnati Aviation, Air Mod, Select Aircraft Service, and the Tri-State Warbird Museum are dealing with a recently approved zoning change for a 73-acre parcel in very close proximity to Claremont County Airport, with a potential 185-unit planned community with homes located as close as 1,000 feet from the runway surface. You can all imagine what will happen from here. People will move near an airport and start complaining about all those airplanes. It's an old story and a predictable one. The potential development is being proposed by Ridge Stone Builders with Brookstone Homes and Episcopal Retirement Services. The proposal places homes near the base to final leg of the airport traffic pattern when landing runway 4. While aircraft are operating from runway 22, departure paths will cross near or over the proposed development. According to airport stakeholders, the proximity of the proposed development will create inevitable disruption from airplane noise. After these messages, a bird decided not to share the skies and strikes EAA's B-17 while on tour. Details after these messages. Aviation Safety Resources is disrupting the market for aircraft emergency parachute recovery systems. ASR systems are smaller, lighter weight, and offer longer repack cycles than similar products available in the current market. ASR has a recovery system available for every type of aircraft. Sport, experimental, light sport, general aviation, urban air mobility, vertical takeoff and landing, electric propulsion, and unmanned aerial systems. Find the right product for your aircraft at aviationsafetyresources.com. I believe that if people use the landing doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're going to hear more about it. Welcome back. A bird wasn't playing nice and strikes EAA's B-17G aluminum overcast at approximately 3 p.m. on Saturday, March 20th. The B-17 suffered some minor damage to a wing from an apparent bird strike during a landing approach to Gwinnett County Airport Briscoe Field near Lawrenceville, Georgia. During the B-17 tour stop, the damage was discovered after the B-17 flight experience had landed, and the apparent bird strike did not cause any disturbance or complications during the flight. Aircraft technicians are currently inspecting the airplane to determine and repair any damage that might have occurred with the bird strike, which took place between the right side engines. As a precautionary measure, the remainder of this week's flight at the Lawrenceville tour stop were canceled following the incident. 
determination of upcoming B-17 tour stops will be made after a complete inspection of the bird strike area. EAA's aluminum overcast B-17 was donated to the EAA Aviation Foundation in 1981, with the provision the aircraft being maintained in airworthy condition. After being displayed at the EAA Aviation Museum for a decade, the airplane made its national tour debut in the spring of 1994. That does it for today's show. I'm your host, Kimberly Kim. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media and feel free to comment with story ideas or just to say hi. We hope to enjoy the show. We'll see you next time.